we're in a space where there's like this renaissance when it comes to legitimate curators and it's going to make it interesting. I really feel like the kids these days are going through. This is the most respectable music period since the 90s. Like I feel like the 2000 and. 14, 15 on has been the most respectable. Like music has been going up. Like 2000s, yeah. which is a whole nother. Like I, I know I'm diverting. <laughs> 2000s were trash, bro. A lot of great music that I love. I was gonna say, like, myself. you mean from like the music standpoint, or like, like what's going on around the music? Like, which Everything. part of it is, is better and or trash? Uh, so it's more about holistic, right? So there were a lot of great people, right? Yeah in the 2000s, a lot of great music that yeah. I can go on, you know, hours and hours, there's a set. But the problem is, it was like, it, was, uh, it wasn't It was as deep, it wasn't as many people, yeah. you know, you, know, you, yeah. you look down on the bench, it's like, or is it your starting five, or is the whole team rolling? <laughs> you know, on, in the 90s, there were like a lot of quote unquote throwaways that were still, like, they were killers, right? You had all these different groups, all right, you had all these different uh, solo artists, yeah. right? R&B was killing it, hip hop was killing it. All those sounds were outside and getting a lot of respect. Gospel was doing his thing, country. A lot of them actually saw their height in that period. Not to own, mention the money, the injection of money, yeah, like okay. was aligned completely with the success that you saw. It's like, hey man, we making so much money. Let's keep throwing some more money. Let's put a million dollars in a music video yeah, so we have some yeah, more more creative yeah, space. I feel it. I feel it. So when you track it. A part of that might be because, hey, man, that money was, it dipped in the 2000s, right? Like early 2000s, Napsters, all that shit. All right, things start going down. We can only maybe invest unless you're only the top. You got to be at the top, right? We're figuring it out. And then you have this period, accessibility increases, right? Because of technology. Uh, distribution awareness increases because of social media, yeah. right? And then... I don't know why there weren't like as many bands and things like that, but like you start seeing more of those come out. Then the Kendrick Lamar's and Drake. I felt like Kendrick, Drake, Drake actually almost individually, Drake, Nikki, like they were almost like the beginning of the next golden era or close to gold. Yeah. Like there, there was a there was a drought. Like, hey, when Wayne was saying I'm the best in the world, there was nobody saying. No, nah, you not. Yeah. What other area? Like in the nineties, they'll be like, "Nah, bro, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best." Like there wasn't even nobody trying to challenge them. You yeah. know, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you just that's how like how you know it was some monsters there, but it was really top heavy in yeah. that period. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I I think I can agree with that because I also think that era was the start of like they were like the grandfathers of the internet era today. I mean, yeah, like exactly like most of those artists. I think I found like. Kendrick Lamar, and I know I found J. Cole off of YouTube. You know, so I remember, I always remember, I can remember the day yep. I found J. Cole's music off of exactly YouTube. Exactly where I found both of them. So it's like, they would have started kind of like, whether, I don't know if they think of it like that, but they would have started like the way we view shit today, you know what I'm saying? Yep. They, they trained us. And I also think too, like, because there's so much that gets pushed out at you, like even though people like to make the argument that there's a lot, you, there's a lot of less quality music today it's because there are more people putting stuff out. I would argue that there's also more quality music out there yeah. because of the same thing, right? So it's like back then, you might know like four, five R&B artists at one point in them, but you know like 80, you know what I'm saying, at least. <laughs> you know, really more than that, if you start mm -hmm. going down the line a little bit, bro, it's really more than that, you know? Yep. Which I guess is, there's pros and cons to that, you know? There's probably some, some, some steep cons, but I feel like the pros <laughs> outweigh the cons in my opinion. It depends on what side of the table you are. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. If you're the artist, it probably sucks. As it a consumer, sucks. it's great. You, it's, yeah. it's, it's an increase of middle class for the artist <laughs> yeah. and decrease in the top. Hey, I'm killing it. The numbers. I'm. Yeah. Hey, my money is stupid, and I'm looking down on the rest of you guys. It's yeah. like, nah, we we, we we all about right here. Yeah, man. we yeah. all about right here, <laughs> trying to figure out how somebody can get to the top of this thing. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's where it's at. But that yeah, exactly. That's why I feel like yeah, it's we're in this, it's a beautiful space, right? And there's a lot of things happen around it like listen like all the curators the shows like there's so much energy around it so much variety 
where there's been variety before, but people are figuring it out, right? And, yeah. and people are figuring out how to make the money and get the money from it. So now we can put more energy into it because at the end of the day, people got to eat, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, once you know where that money comes from, okay, I can figure out how I can spend a little more time over here. Yeah. So like we're we're entering a great space like for music, financially, and obviously on the most important part, creatively, artistically, not the existence of the uh, creativity because I know it always has been there, but in the the awareness of it and being yeah. able to package it like you know like it's supposed to be. That's that's all you know. I know because when we talk about errors, people are like, eh, I feel like objectively, I go deeper in another day, but I feel like objectively, uh, yeah, I get it, bro. There's like, some I, arguments. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> trade. I don't think I would trade being in any any other music period uh, for the one that we're in now. I think one like it probably been much harder to be like a marketer. In the oh, 90s, yeah, 2000, because nah. it would have been like purely relationship based. You know what I'm saying? Now you can kind of hop in the game with no relationships. Like, if you truly don't know anybody, you oh, can yeah. still start building yourself up. But then also, I think from an artist standpoint, oh, no, I'll say we would not we would not exist as we are today. Like, yeah, easy, uh, we yeah. would have to work at a label, yeah, like outright from the gate down yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, unless we was like, I don't know, have built up some crazy like local street team or something. Because I've heard stories like that, like people building like local street teams so parties yeah. and stuff. And those people get brought be on into... some Uncle Luke type shit. Yeah, exactly. And people like yeah. that. that. That that's a very real route. But for the most part, yeah, nah. Yeah, and I, would, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I could have did that route, but because you would have had to be a, a, a extroverted personality, probably. Yeah, be outside club outside. promoter, yeah. like you know, one of those type of hustling individuals. Yeah. And yeah, that's a that's a special type of special type, type of person, of, bro. Type of person, yeah. yeah. And that goes to the artist point. I always make this one point with artists, right? Anytime an artist talks about like making content, like mm-hmm. how much it sucks, I'm always like, bro, like 10, 15 years ago, you would have had to go like stand on the corner somewhere, like slinging CDs, you know, harassing <laughs> random people on the street to try to get them to stop and talk to you. It's like today. You could do that, but from the comfort of your own home, right? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know about every artist, bro. Maybe some of them built different, but I would much rather make a TikTok than stand on the corner for five, six hours a day, bro. That's the, it's like this is, I don't know, man. I can make my TikToks, throw them up, and then shit. If I wanted to go take a nap, bro, while I'm sleep, still building people, <laughs> like bringing exactly. people in, the bro. content still moving, <laughs> bro, like. It is crazy to think about sometimes. Like, no, they were actually doing that. Like, like getting, like, bro, like getting up. Really? Like, yeah. Going down to the <laughs> local print shop. Bodega and yeah, shit. Bro, yeah, bro, getting 300 CDs pressed up, carrying them shits around. I, like, bro, I would not have done that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I know I'm not an artist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, and I, I, I tell most artists that don't make content, like, bro, you would not have survived in the era because you won't even make five TikToks from the comfort of your air conditioned room, bro. Like you think you you want me to believe you would have stood on the corner for five, six hours a day, bro. No, you wouldn't have. You would have been back then talking like, man, I gotta go stand on the corner for five hours, bro. I ain't about to do it. This is the exact yeah. same shit, bro. bro. Just like just different era. Every <laughs> every era has some things that artists would not like to do, but they gotta do it. Yeah. And then the ones that do it, they make it. Or I mean or at least get closer to making it. Right. So yeah. pick your problems. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Do you wanna be slanging cds or do you want to be making youtube videos tiktok and he, videos and even if you're gonna slang because we have one client that still does like the street thing like, yeah, yeah. but i'm like bro like do that with the internet stuff like if you're gonna do it at least have the internet stuff on top you know what I'm saying? don't like completely disregard it because you feel like this is the old school way is better because it's like bro, bro I promise, it, it, make sure people see it yeah exactly you can do just that but make sure people actually see that you're doing it and that's gonna give you extra points what i've never seen any of them do and I would love to see it. Is I would love to get an ad that says like, "Hey, I'm handing out CDs on the corner of Euclid and what's where I go? What's the what's little five one shit? Euclid Damn. and whatever, bro. I don't know. Let's I'm be handing out. I'm be handing out. I'm, I'm, memorial, I'm be selling CDs on the corner of Euclid and whatever from two to five. Come check me out. It's a short Instagram ad that maybe pops up. You know what I'm saying? On my timeline. <laughs> 20 minutes before they started doing this. I've never yeah. seen that before. Yeah. But they'll be following me. I'll be like, damn, man, I'm over here by a little five points. Let me go. Let me go see what's up. 